Okay, now we're going to look at the sustainable growth rate. Uh, the formula for sustainable growth is return on equity multiplied by the retention rate. Uh, the growth rate of a firm is the function of the amount of net profit it retains in the firm and the return that it earns on those retained funds. So this simple formula represents the maximum earnings growth that a firm can achieve without new financing. So if a company grows faster than its sustainable growth rate, it must raise additional funds uh, either from debt or equity. Now we already know how to uh, deal with the first part of this equation, return on equity. Um, that's simply net profit divided by total equity. So we'll uh, turn our attention to the retention rate portion of this equation. Now the formula for retention rate is one minus the dividend payout rate. This formula is showing us what proportion of net income the company is retaining in the firm. The retention rate is the complement of the dividend rate, which is the proportion of net income or earnings that is being paid out to shareholders. Um, in general, the earnings should be retained in a company if the rate of return in a side of company exceeds what investors could earn outside the company on an investment with the same risk. So, for example, if a company is currently uh, returning, uh, has a, say, a return on investment of 20% and investments of similar risk are outside the company, are only returning 5%, we would not expect this company to pay a significant dividend. We would expect them rather to retain the funds inside the company and reinvest them for more 20% returns. Um, and this is why growth companies often pay no dividends, while companies with no growth but steady, dependable earnings, such as utility companies, often pay out a much higher percentage of their earnings as dividends. So retention rates and dividend payout rates tend to be similar within an industry and are largely a reflection of the maturity of the companies in that industry. So let's look at an example of this using Hasbro. Now we need both dividends paid and the net income for the year. Well, um, net income is generally very easy. We know we can find that on the income statement. Dividends, however, uh, are usually not on the income statement. Instead, we can find them in the statement of cash flows in the third section uh, called cash flows from financing activity. And uh, we can see uh, that here, dividends paid were $309 million um, in this year. And uh, we also remember that net earnings is also presented on the cash flow statement, usually as the first item. So really the only statement we need to calculate the retention rate and the dividend payout rate is, um, is the statement of cash flows. Okay, so let's do it. So if we took the statement of cash flows for Hasbro for the year 2017, um, we would see that they paid dividends of $276 million and had net income of $396 million. So we plug that into our retention rate formula, which is one minus dividends paid divided by net income, and we have one minus 0.698 or a 0.3, that's a 30% retention rate. What this means is effectively in 2017, Hasbro retained 30% of its net profit inside the company and paid out the other 70% um, uh, to its shareholders. Now let's look at another example I think you're going to find is very interesting. In the next year, Hasbro 2018, they paid um, $309 million in dividends on a net income of $220 million. So we plug those numbers into our retention rate formula, which is 1 minus dividends paid over net income, 309 divided by 220 would get us 1.403. 1 minus 1.403 would give us negative 0.4 or minus 40%. So we can now say that the dividend payout rate is 140% of earnings. But wait, like how could that be? How could the payout rate be more than they earned? Uh, now the retention rate, of course, is still... Uh, one minus the dividend payout rate, um, which is you know minus forty percent, um, and uh, this is uh, this is not as unusual as you might think it uh, as you might think it could be because once a company has uh, established a certain amount of dividend payout rates, those tend to be very sticky, uh, and so what may have happened here is that Hasbro's uh, income uh, may have declined um, significantly in one year, but they didn't reduce their dividend payout. So now if the retention rate is less than zero, um, as is the case of Hasbro here, uh, it means 
that they're paying out more than they're earning. Now, while it's not unusual, it's also not sustainable. Either the dividend will be cut or the earnings will increase. It has to be one or the other. So while you may see this occasionally, the condition cannot persist over a long period because the company cannot, for the long term, pay out more than it earns. So now we go back to the sustainable growth rate, which we said at the beginning is defined by the formula return on equity times the retention rate. So using an example for Hasbro then in 2017, the return on equity is 21.7% times a 30% retention rate. The sustainable growth rate is 6.5%.